Okay, so I just finished doing my A-Push homework and whenever I do my A-Push homework, I listen to Hamilton and it reminded me of this conversation I had yesterday with this guy in my English class. I don't even know how, but like we got to talking about Hamilton and I asked him like, were you a Hamilton kid? Like, did you ever listen to Hamilton? And he was like, no, I'm not depressed. what's up i'm sabrina and welcome back to my book nook i painted my nails black so new color new era i decided to do a book haul for today because i haven't been like mass buying books all at once i still buy a lot of books it's just spread out more and then you know barnes and noble favorite day of the year had their 50% off hardcover sale and I had to go and so I got like half my haul from that sale fun fact I actually had to go back into the store after I finished checking out because they didn't get me half off on the one hardcover I wanted half off on so I was really embarrassed because I hate being that type of customer that goes back and like asks for a refund or like asks for a half off like it I just wanted to go crawl in a hole after some of these books I have actually already read just because I bought them like so long ago by long ago i mean like a month or so but i still decided to include them in this haul because again i buy a lot of books and i feel like it'd be weird to not include them in a haul video when i do consume so much that's what today's video is gonna be it's gonna be a little new year's haul 2023 haul let's start off with the first book the appeal by janice hallett so this one was actually buy one get one 50 percent off on barnes and noble and i think it was like their monthly pick in november or december or something and recently i've been in the mood for like murder mystery type stories not only in books but movies when glass onion came out i literally watched it like three times i actually already read this one and so it's told in the style of like emails which is not really my thing because i read love rosie like two years ago and it was the worst book i've ever read so i've always been like wary but i decided to take a chance on this book and i was actually very pleasantly surprised by it i think that the characters in this book were so interestingly written i don't know why i enunciated those words like that but i think that it was definitely such a blast to read this book and i read it in the middle of midterms so i was like studying and then i was taking a break and i was reading the mystery in this book was definitely told in an unconventional way but it did kind of have a satisfying payoff although i will tell you now though this is kind of a spoiler but it doesn't really matter you don't get like official confirmation of who the murder victim is until you're like two-thirds or halfway through the book it's a lot and the emails are very very lengthy and comprehensive but i think that contemporary murders and telling them through a modern lens is actually something that's really fascinating to me now can you tell i've been watching too many ryan johnson interviews uh, anyways i think that this was actually a really cool read i would definitely check it out and i definitely don't regret my purchase of it moving on to the next book we have for better or worse by erin la rosa okay let me just explain this so i follow this instagram account it's like upper ya case reads or whatever and they have like a bunch of good book recommendations i've recommended them on this channel before i love this account go check it out but i've been following this rom-com book for a while and recently i have become obsessed with the great british baking show actually you know it's not even an obsession it's a lifestyle i have this be sweet jurgen shirt on etsy in my cart ready to go i'm just waiting for my next paycheck until i can get it i'm actually like creepily obsessed with the great british baking show right now and so when i had a rom-com book advertised me as two rival cooking show hosts that fall in love and fake date um um hello 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 i've also already read this one and i can say that while it isn't super duper top-notch romance read i had really had such a fun time reading this i thought it was pretty good for what it is it's like i've read better romance books you know what i mean but like i actually really did like this one i think that though the storyline and like the reasons they're enemies to lovers is a little bit like as a feminist can i support this tiny spoiler but not really a spoiler because they kind of say it in the synopsis of the book but like leo like makes like a misogynistic comment towards nina that's why they're enemies to lovers so like mm, as a feminist can i support this and then i look and it's a foodie romance 
Uh, yes, I can. Because so I'm going to pretend this is like an alternate Great British Bake Off, except it's not British at all, and it's not really a Bake Off. It's like a cooking show or something. I think this book is wonderful if you like fake dating, if you like rivals to lovers, and if you love food books. It's just like kind of a niche thing to love. Is that a trope? Point is, I think you would definitely like this book. I think it's kind of underrated. I haven't really heard anybody talk about it, so... I would check it out. So moving on to the next book, which is another romance book, When in Rome by Sarah Adams. So I'm actually still currently reading this right now. This is how much I have left. But I bought this for buy one, get one 50% off with The Appeal. And I have to say, as of right now, I've read better. Writing is very... Yeah, it's... You know it's writing i don't want to hate on this book too much just because i actually think it's kind of fun sometimes and it's really incredibly cheesy and i haven't even finished it so i don't know ending might completely change my opinion of it i read like the first two pages of this and i really liked like the quirky funny re writing style i guess and i was hooked because i've been looking for a lot of good romance reads but this book is kind of like i guess like a loose adaptation of roman holiday which stars Audrey Hepburn, which it literally says on the back. And it has, again, a food romance kind of, like the main love interest, the guy is a baker, he bakes pies, he owns a pie shop. I think I'm starting to have like a pattern for which type of romance books I gravitate towards. I think that this book so far has been fun to read, but it's also, I feel like this book is for people who never discovered Wattpad or just like fan fiction style writing when they were a young teenager. Again, I haven't finished it, so everything I say might change in the future, but for now, I think it's definitely a romance book that I don't know if I would <laughs> entirely recommend to other people. I'm just gonna say though, I don't regret my purchase. Even though it's extremely cheesy, I still think it's pretty cute so far. Moving on to the next book, we have Tales from the Cafe by Toshikazu Kawaguchi, sequel to Before the Coffee Gets Cold, which if you watched my top reads of 2022, you would know that book is one of my top reads. So I just had to get this book at the hardcover sale. I'm very excited. I'm pretty sure it's like a new cast of characters as well as some old characters returning. But that first book literally broke my heart and made me so sad and made me cry so much that I am actually kind of scared of what the second book is going to do to me. I looked for the third book as well, but I couldn't find it. So I wasn't able to get that one on sale. But I am super duper excited to check this one out. If you don't know what Before the Coffee Gets Cold is, it's this series about this like coffee shop in which time travel exists, but you have to be back before the coffee gets cold. And there's like a bunch of other rules and a cool cast of characters. I would definitely recommend checking out the first book. The next book we have Alone With You in the Ether by Olive e. Blake. I was either going to get this book or I was going to get The Atlas Paradox, which is the sequel to The Atlas Six. I read The Atlas Six. And to be honest, I know that I liked it, but I cannot explain to you a single thing that happens in the book. It's fucking like quantum physics theory, magical realism taken to like the next level. And I'm not smart enough to comprehend any of that. So I already knew that if I bought the Atlas Paradox, I was probably just going to read like 400 pages more of confusing magical realism theory that I was not going to understand. And I'm starting to worry that maybe Alone With You in the Ether is going to be too because I, I looked up reviews and like t videos on this book after I bought it and it was more of this like complicated magical quantum physical theory. I don't even fucking know and I'm so scared to read this book now because I'm not smart enough to understand any of that and the writing makes my head hurt. But Olive B. Blake is a good author. I like, did very much enjoy The Atlas Six. I think she's very good at what she does. I bought it because I did read the synopsis and it sounded very very interesting. I love books that subvert tropes or subvert genres. Changing it up is always fun to read so I'm hoping that's what this is. Also it's just a love story at the bottom i'm always a sucker for romance so this better turn out good the next book we have i'm glad my mom died by Jeanette mccurdy this was the book i went back for to get that discount and this was the only book i wanted from the hardcover sale i've been waiting to get this book ever since it came out because i heard a lot of hype for it and again i'm not like a non-fiction memoir book girly but then again, like Crying in H Mart is one of my favorite books of all time and that book completely changed my life. And that was about a girl's relationship with her mom. So this one is also a memoir from a celebrity about her relationship with her mom, except it's like in the opposite direction, 
where she is did not have a good relationship with her mom i am very excited to read this book because i've heard nothing but good things about it i never watched iCarly growing up but i did watch a lot of sam and cat so i guess i could say i'm a Jeanette mccurdy fan i probably am gonna be a Jeanette mccurdy fan after i finish reading this book i'm gonna wait a little bit before i tackle this just because i feel like it's it's definitely gonna be my personality after i finish reading it and i'm gonna save everybody else around me by just putting it off for a couple weeks the next book we have night crawling by Layla motley this one i've also semi started i literally 10 pages in so i wouldn't even count that as starting at all but this one i had never heard of before but i saw it on display at barnes and noble and as part of oprah winfrey's book club which fun fact by the way oprah winfrey and i share the same birthday we're both Aquariuses. Isn't that fucking crazy? I read the synopsis of this book and I was very, very intrigued by it. I was looking for another hardcover. And honestly, one of my goals for 2023, same as last year, has been to try to diversify my bookshelf. I do think that it's important to, again, highlight and support minority and POC authors. Very excited for this book. I also went on online and I looked up reviews for this book and most of them were pretty positive. So I am doubly excited for that. So moving on to the final book, we have Babel by Arv Kwong. I am so fucking mad because I didn't get this during the hardcover sale. I got this like a month ago but anyways i am super excited for this book it is so thick though i don't know what if i'm ever gonna finish it but i've heard nothing but good things about rf kwong she has a new book actually next year that i'm very excited about coming out it's called yellow face and i would look up the plot summary to that book because it's already gonna sound like a hell of a book and i think that's probably gonna be one of my more anticipated reads this year also bought this book because one i am dark academia bitch but two i also love books that critique dark academia a lot of people don't talk about it but like dark academia is sort of like mm, how do i put this elitist classist racist all those things and so i'm pretty sure this book calls out most of that and i know this book has been a bit of a i don't know if controversy is the right word for it it's been in the news the book talk news because i'm pretty sure like some reviewer or reader said they didn't like this book because the racism made them feel uncomfortable and they would have related more to it if they were an asian person so that's why they didn't like the book and like rated it like one star or something which is i'm not even gonna comment on that because like i think that's the funniest thing i've ever heard but yeah i am super duper excited for this book i sneaked a peek at the first line and i'm already intimidated by it and we're gonna see how long this takes to read because i feel like i'm either gonna digest it in maybe a couple hours or it's gonna take me like five fucking months okay but yeah that's everything i want to talk about if you watched the entire thing thank you so much for watching subscribe only if you want to though and i will see you all next time bye